Good morning. This is Pastor Tom Adams of the Good News Bible Church. In John 5, verse 29, there's a verse that many think speaks of being good enough to be accepted of God, and that it means being saved is by doing good works. But we need to compare Scripture in order to arrive to what Jesus Christ is saying and what the clear meaning of it is. Jesus is speaking of the resurrection when he says that they that have done good will come forth unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. First of all, we know that attaining eternal life is not by doing good works, because in Titus 3, 5, it's written not by works or righteousness we have done, but according to his mercy. He has saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The question is, what did Jesus mean when he said those who have done good? In John 6, 28, he was asked, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus simply replied, the work of God is that you believe in me. When we trust Jesus Christ as our Savior, the righteousness that he has is given to us and is put to our account. In order to go to heaven when we leave this world, we have to be perfect, which means we have to be sinless. And as believers, his sinless perfection is given to us. God the Father only sees us through the blood of Christ. Hebrews 9.22 tells us that without the shedding of his blood, there is no remission of sins. Man can do everything humanly possible, but without faith in Jesus Christ and the shedding of his blood, there is no salvation. When Jesus spoke of those who have done good, he's speaking of believers who have trusted Jesus Christ and that and him alone. Also today, I'd like to talk about Bible prophecy and how it speaks of the condition in the world today. For some time, there has been hatred for Israel. Actually, it started in the Bible when Abram had a son with Hagar called Ishmael. Hagar was a handmaiden of Sarah. Sarah also bore a son by Abraham who was named Isaac. It's important to remember that Hagar was an Egyptian. The Islamic religion believes that the lineage that leads to the Messiah, who they call Mahdi, comes through Ishmael. But by studying the Holy Bible, we see that the lineage where Christ came from started with Isaac. The Bible traces all of Christ's earthly forefathers, so there's no doubt that he is the rightful heir to the throne that will be established when he comes to set up his kingdom. It is of the utmost importance to know that Jesus Christ has always existed. He was with God the Father when the world was made, when man was created, and also it says in John 1, 3, that all things were made by him and there is nothing made that was that he did not make. There are many who say that the world started from a large explosion. Even a child can see that that's ridiculous. The Bible speaks of God's creation, and it also tells of the hatred nations and people have for Israel. In Psalms 83, 4, it's written, They have said, Come and and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may not be any more remembered. In the near future, there will be a world leader who will be instrumental in the signing of a peace pact with Israel. Ezekiel 38, 11 says that the people of Israel will be living in unwalled villages. This tells us they believe they are safe. However, in the middle of the seventh year peace pact, this world leader who is called Gog will break the pact and he will move against Israel. While Gog is the world leader, Magog is where he's from. Magog has been identified as Russia or Moscow. It also speaks of his controlling Tubal. Tubal has been proven to be Tobolsk. Russia has always aligned itself with the Islamic countries and when the world leader who is the Antichrist moves against Israel, He will bring with him the Islamic armies as well as his own. It tells us in Ezekiel 38, 18 that when Gog, the Antichrist, moves against Israel, God will deal with him and his followers furiously. Verse 18 through 23 describes all that God will bring upon those that went against Israel. The outlook for the future is not pleasant for one who hasn't trusted in Jesus Christ as their Savior. But it's not too late. If you simply believe that Christ has paid for your sin by his death, burial, and resurrection, you will be eternally saved. There's nothing else we need to do. If you add works of any kind, no matter how little, you're really not trusting Christ alone, and you're saying that he didn't do enough, and you're lost. 
This has been Pastor Tom Adams. I would like to invite you to our services Sunday at 9 a.m. and Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Until next time, may the grace and love of God become more and more real to you each and every day. Goodbye for now, and thank you for listening.